In this video, we'll be setting up Joost SEO for your WordPress website. Let me give you a quick overview of what you will learn. I will show you how to set up the plugin correctly, make sure that the right things are indexed. We're talking about all these features and settings of Joost SEO. I'm going to explain you everything about titles, site descriptions, meta tags, separators, so you know everything about it and how it works. Let's dive in right now! Log into your WordPress website. If you're still logging in using WP no! Admin, no! No! Um, that's not a very safe way, so please watch my tutorial about securing your WordPress website. From here, we go to plugins and we're gonna click on add new. Type in Joost and we're gonna click on install now. And then we click on activate. Now we click on start first time configuration over there. If you want to sign up for a weekly webinar, you can register or just click this away like this. Well, the first thing we do is we click on this start SEO data optimization. A little bit technical things will be changed and added. Or while this is running in the background, we click on continue over there. Does your site represent an organization or a person? As this is the website we're optimizing right now, it is definitely not a person, it is a organization. And the website name is Alphabet Apartments. Your website name should be your organization name or yourself. And also the name of the organization is exactly the same. Then we're gonna pick our organization logo over there. Click on select image. Just pick your biggest size logo you have and press select. Then we scroll down a bit and we press save and continue. If you have any Facebook accounts or Twitter accounts or Instagram or whatever, just add them in right here. But my client doesn't currently have those, so we're just leaving them empty and we press save and continue. You can always add them in later. Here you can choose whatever you want. If you want to help them, press yes. If you don't, just leave it on no. Also, if you want a newsletter, you will receive every single week a email about SEO information. It's really interesting if you want to learn more about SEO or just press save and continue. The next thing we click on, visit your SEO dashboard over there. Click on it. All right, this is the dashboard and at the notifications, you will learn almost every week a notification about new features, updates, etc. about Joe's SEO. It sometimes is a little bit too much. If you for whatever reason want to go back to the first time configuration, you can do it over there. And then we go to the left side, we go to the settings. Now let's walk through all the settings step by step if we need to change them. We're talking about updates, well this is one. Just press on next, next and got it. In this tutorial I'll be covering all of these things, so don't worry it will get clear to you as we go. At the general tab we are at site features. Here we can enable and disable a couple of features on our website. For all these things that are on already on your website are actually the things we need for SEO. So they are really great. The only thing we're thinking about is the Slack sharing. If you don't think people on Slack will share your business because Slack is actually a more business orientated platform. And if your website does not target this audience, you can turn this off. However, this website is all about long stay in the Netherlands and they're also focusing on expats. So you can figure that Slack sharing is actually a pretty good idea for them. And then we have another thing, the admin bar menu that is over here, right there. I don't actually like the admin bar menu of Joost SEO, why not? Regularly, like every week, you will get a notification over there, a red dot, which says new features of the update. Trust me, if everything is set up and done, I don't care about Joe's updates because they work most of the time fine. So I'm gonna turn this thing off. Now you definitely want the XML sitemap, which is really important. Press save changes. Let's go to site basics. So the website name is actually the name you will see in every title on your website's SEO. So just keep it this way. Then we have the alternate website name. If you have a short name of your website or an acronym, just fill it in over there. We don't have it, so that's okay. 
then the tagline is actually really important. You can think about a tagline if you have your logo and below that are two or three words about what you actually do. In this case, we have surfaced apartments, which is all they do. Then the title separator, choose whatever you like. I like the pipe more, so that's what we're gonna use. Now the site image is really important because if you share your website URL with someone on WhatsApp or Facebook or Twitter, it will use a image from the page, but better is a image with your logo inside of it. So for this image, I created a special image for my client. We're going to upload it. And then we have this beautiful image over there, which actually shows their logo and one of their surfaced apartments. Then we scroll down a little bit. If you have more users on your website, which also are editing pages and blog posts, then you might want to restrict this and keep this on because now they are not able to no index certain pages or posts. And users tracking, uh, whatever you want, if you want to help them out, enable this. Press save changes. And then we go to site representation over there. Now we've already done this. We have an organization name. We have an alternate name if you have one. Uh, your logo, uh, your Facebook, Twitter, and uh, all the other profiles you can edit in over there. And we go to site connections over there. Here you can verify your site with different tools for search engines. However, if you want to know how to configure Google Search Console on your, for your website, follow this tutorial and I'll show you step by step how you can install and activate the Google Search Console for your website. Really important for SEO. All right, well done. We have completed general, so we can close this one. Let's go to the content types. Now the content types are actually kind of templates to use on your content of your website. How just show the SEO information. The homepage can be edited on the homepage itself. We're gonna do that in just a minute. But the posts, for example, first things first, if you don't have any posts or a blog on your website, like this website, then just disable this one then you won't show the posts in the search results. Because in our case, this website does not create any posts up here or blogs for their audience. So you can safely disable this. If you do create blogs, then keep this enabled or else they will not show up in the search engines. Before we go on, let me explain you a little bit how this works. We have different things in the search engine result page. For example, this is the title. Then we have a separator over there and then we have the site title. There it is. So the title is always the one of the post. And of course the meta description below that. Let's suppose you have post SEO title. It will contain the title of your post. Then you have a page number, the separator, the pipe in our case. And then we have the site title which we actually configured at the site basics. So this will be the template for all the post titles. So also for the meta description, you, you can create a template and we can use variables. This can be useful if you have a lot of content. If you click on insert variable, you will see that there's a percentage shine and after that you can type all these things. There are a lot more variables you can use in descriptions and in titles. You can actually see them all on their website. You can use date titles, parent titles, site titles, excerpt separators. And then we have even a lot more post types, IDs, name, page number, terms. There are a lot more and you can even create your own variables if you want to have them. So this is really great. If you want to have your post a different image than the other one, then for example, your pages or the rest of your website, then we need to buy Joost SEO Premium and then you can configure this especially for your posts. Now let's scroll more down and here we can change the schema of things. Schema is a way of markup that tells the search engine how to use and read your different posts. In this case, the posts, we have different kind of things. Are your posts about your normal web page, or are you talking about items, uh, FAQ page, profile, contact? Just choose one that you use your posts for. If they're not over here, just choose default. And then we have the article types, which is actually about the blog itself. If the, those posts are used for a blog, then choose blog posts. If you scroll down, you can choose anything you want uh, if it fits. If it doesn't fit anything, you can just keep it on default. Now, if you want to SEO controls and assessments within your blog post, I, you definitely want this. I don't know why this is even an option, but just keep it enabled. Press save changes when you're done. 
then we scroll up and then we go to pages over here. As you can see, this is exactly the same as the post, but now we're talking about pages. Of course, this website has a lot of pages, so we're keeping this on. Then we have this one. Now the title, you can customize it also with the meta description, which is great. And then we have again the page type of your website. I would keep it on web page default and the article types would be none in this case because we're talking about pages. But if you find another one that suits your website more, then just choose it. And then we go to projects. Again, exactly the same, but just a different content type. If you don't have any projects in your entire website, then just uh, disable this one. It won't get indexed. It won't be sent out to the search engines. And that works great. The rest is just everything we've just covered, but then for projects. Press save changes. And then we go to the categories and tags. Now these settings control the categories pages for your posts. If you don't have posts again, just close them or else just fill them in the way you want to do them. Normally you can see you have the term title of your category and then you have archives added next to it. If you don't want this, um, I can fully understand that. Just press delete and then you just have the term title page number if applicable, separator and then the site title. Again, you can fill in the meta description. Then you have the additional settings, show the controls and assessments. Those are at pace and categories. You can see them over there. And last is a very important one. If you want to have the prefix in the URL tag, normal you can see a category URL, which contains slash category. Show or hide that prefix. Totally depends on your website. If you don't have a very big website with a lot of products and categories and posts and pages and all these things, but just a simple website with a blog like you and me, then you can simply remove them. If you do have a gigantic web shop with also get a lot of blogs, then you might want to enable it. For most websites, however, I would disable the category slug. And then we have another categories over there, but these are other categories, exactly the same as the other one. Just change it and press save changes. Then we go to project categories. It is again the same, but now for projects. If you don't have projects and you can just press this one, disable it, then you're all good. If you do have it, change it, whatever you want and press save changes. And then we go to project tags over there. If you have products and you're subdividing them with tags, you can use this one and change everything you want over there. However, I don't use it, so I'm gonna turn this off right here. I'm gonna press save changes. All right, then we go to the last one is are the tags. Again, exactly the same, but these tags are for posts. So if you're creating a blog and you're subdividing them with tags, this is what they're all about. You can click on a tag and then you go uh, and see and this. Again, archives deleted if you don't want to have it on my website. I'm not using text at all, so I'm just gonna turn this off and press save changes. And then we have more. We also have another text, but these tags are for pages. So again, if you want to have it, yes or no, turn it off, it's okay, and change anything you want. Let me go to type over there. I don't have types on this website, so I'm gonna turn this off, save it. And then we have another type. If your theme, if your theme uses them, then you can see what they are used for, like posts or blogs, but we're not having this, so I'm gonna turn this off, press save changes. All right, then the last category is the advanced. Then we go to crawl optimization. If you want this, you need to have premium. We don't have it. Then we go to breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are really important and useful for your website. If you don't have them enabled on your website, you can press on this your breadcrumbs, click on it. There are a few ways to implement them. You can use the Gutenberg block, but you can also use a short code, for example, like this. Just copy this one and place it on a page or a post or whatever, wherever you want it. And then you can have the breadcrumbs from Joost. Now breadcrumbs are really useful for SEO purposes as Google can easily navigate to your website and also your visitor visitors can all, always click on the back button in your breadcrumb to go to the right page they want to see. Here you can change the separator, you can change the anchor text for the homepage. You can also use a prefix for the entire path, prefix for archives, for search pages, and a breadcrumb for the 404 page. Here you can click to bold the last page, which I usually do because it looks really nice. 
If you don't want it, disable it. You can change the post types. If you have posts, blocks, do you want to have the categories, formats or tags inside of the taxonomy? It really depends on how do you do the breadcrumbs. A normal website, which is really simple, just use none. Also web projects are great. And this also counts for taxonomies. If you want to have categories, uh, formats, then you can change them all here if you want that. A normal website, you don't need to change this. After this, we go to the author archives on the left side. This is really important. If you don't have blog posts or you're just the only author on your website, just disable the entire author archives. It's also a security issue. And if you're the only author on your website, you don't want to push extra information to the search engines that isn't relevant for your website. So we're just going to enable this on this website and press save changes. Then we go to date archives. I totally agree with Joost on this one. They could also lead to duplicate content issues. Why we recommend you to disable date archives. Let's dis disable them and scroll down, press save changes and you're all set. Then we go to format archives. Again, for most sites, we recommend that you disable this setting. I totally agree. Just disable it and press save changes. Let's go to special pages. Here you have internal search pages, which are actually really useful and 404 error pages, which should actually be enabled also. So what are we going to do is your title is great page not found. You can change your 404 error page right there. Any search page you search for. Translate it if you want it, change it if you want it. It's just okay. If you upload an image or a video to your media library, WordPress automatically creates a page for that thing. Totally the thin content doesn't add any value to the market. Yoast disables them by default and redirects the attachment URL to the media itself. Really great. So it's automatically turned off. So keep this off. That's great. Let's go to the last one RSS. If you have RSS feed, you can change it over there. Most websites these days don't use RSS unless you are a website with a lot of news content coming out in your niche, for example, then you can change your RSS right here. But you probably have another plugin to do this as well. Then we have to talk about all the settings and then we go to integrations over here. Now, these are some useful integrations with your website. Samurai and Wincher are already on. That's really great. And if you're using the events calendar, this one is also automatically on. Also with WooCommerce, it is turned on automatically. Podcasting, digital downloads and recipe maker. If you have one of these plugins enabled on your website, then these are automatically integrated, which is excellent. We don't have this on this website. Also with Elementor, Jetpack, Algolia, WooCommerce and ACF. I can see Elementor, but I don't see a integration with Divi. And that's something they could really enhance. That's why I think all Divi websites are moving to RankMap now. But hey. All right, then we go to tools over here. In the tools, we can import and export settings. We can use a bulk editor and we can optimize the data, which is already done. If you want to import and export features, you can just export all your settings like this. Press it. And then you have all these settings on your Joost SEO and you can copy this and import it to another website. You can also use the import from other SEO plugins. Then you just choose a plugin that you have already installed on your website and press import. Once you have done this, you can go to the cleanup, select your SEO plugin and press cleanup. I'm not going to do this right now because I'm using rank map on this website and not just SEO. And then we have a bulk editor over here, which is really funny. Here you can change everything in one go. So if you want to change the SEO title, then we can just type them in, in here and we can change this. And then we can just press save all and all is safe. So you don't have to open every single page, but it can save you a lot of time. All right, then we have on the left side, we have premium and premium. You can just buy a premium version. And then we have on the left side workouts and we have redirects, which is all for the premium version. So that's it for all these settings. Let's go to the pages so we can optimize pages for our SEO. We're going to optimize our homepage. I built all my websites in Diffy because I really like it. But as I am in Diffy right now, I cannot change anything for the SEO settings with Joost. That's why I usually use rank math. So where do I go? I go to edit page over there. And here I can change everything for Joost SEO. And if you now scroll a bit down, 
There we can see the Joast SEO settings. Now let me walk you through this so you know how to optimize your pages and posts within WordPress. The first of all is your focus key phrase. What do you want this page to rank on? Well, your home page is always the name of your company. So I'm going to type in alphabet apartments, which is my key phrase right now. Then if we scroll down and here you can see a preview of how it looks in the search engines. All right, what do we see over here is the site title. And this is exactly what we have created during the setup. What you'll see is home and our separator and then the site title. Well, for our home page, you don't want this. What we want in the home page is to delete everything. So we're going to select it, press delete, and then we're going to type alphabet apartments. And then you can type your separator and you type something like surfaced apartments in the Netherlands. And this is excellent. On your home page is always different. So make sure that this is uh, describing what your business does. And as you can see that this bar should be green. And when I type even further, it becomes red and it's too much and it will be cut off in the search engine result page. So keep it green. Now, then you can see the meta description over there. Please provide a meta description. It's not been filled in. So we're going to type it in right now. And I'm going to use some text from the client's website, which is we stand for a sustainable, modern and convenient for business travelers and families in need of temporary housing in the Netherlands. That's way too much, as you can see it. So I'm going to delete it. And now it is green. You want to have your key phrase also in the meta description, as that is the best practice. So what are we going to do? We're going to remove the word we. We're going to change that to alphabet apartments stand for sustainable, modern, convenient for business travelers and families in need of temporary housing in the Netherlands. It's a little bit too long as you can see this orange and not green. So we're going to cut it to make it a little bit smaller. We're going to remove sustainable and then we are green and we are fit. And then we have the SEO analysis. If you click on this one and then Joe's will tell you some things that can be improved on this certain page. What do we see? What do we see? We don't have any outbound links on this page. Well, it's a home page show. Don't worry about all these things right here. We're going to improve this on landing pages. We are actually created for search engines. Of course, as related keywords, track performance, you can connect with Wincher and then we can track our, where we are. And then we have cornerstone content. This is not cornerstone content. What is it? Well, the most important and extensive articles on your website. This is not the home page, of course not. Those are your landing pages, which are really important for the rest of your site. And then we have advanced show them, allow them to search in the search results. Yes, this is all good. Just keep it this way. And then we have uh, insights and with Yoast is also Joe's SEO premium. As you can see, we have more tabs over here. If you press on readability, you will see if this page is actually readable. Well, all these things are very interesting. If you click on it, you can actually read for yourself what it means and how you can improve your page. Schema is also great. Any social share, I can change a, a image for this certain page. But the image that we have used so far is already good. If you want to see me optimize certain pages for SEO, then subscribe to my channel because I will be creating more videos about how to actually do SEO optimization for your website. If you have any questions or you just want to say thank you, Matt, drop them down in the comments. I'll always reply. If you want to see more videos about WordPress, subscribe to my channel and watch this video, which is also really amazing.